What is going on my Masketeers? Welcome back to another episode and today we are here talking about Scream 6. Now Scream 6 is a 2023 American slasher film and it is the sequel to Scream of 2022 but it is also the sixth installment in the Scream film series. Now Scream 6 follows a new ghost face killer who targets the surviving members of the Woodsboro legacy attacks. Now, this time it all takes place in New York as the gang has now moved there for school. So that's Tara, Mindy and her twin brother, Chad. Now, Tara's sister or half-sister, Sam, has moved to New York so she can keep an eye on Tara and make sure that she's good and Throughout the film, it's been highly hinted that everyone has been struggling to deal with the aftermath of what happened. Even some people on social media are thinking that Sam was the real killer behind it all because she is the daughter of Billy Loomis, who was the original killer from the first Scream movie. So as all of that is happening, we're basically going through the journey of trying to discover who this new ghost face is. Something that I find very interesting is the route that they've decided to take in regards to who the ghost face killer is. Because unlike in the previous movies, what they've decided to do here is multiple people could be ghost face because ghost face has now gathered a cult like following due to the amount of murders over the years. It looks like different people are being groomed to take on the ghost face mantle and that's something that's very new for the franchise it's new ground that hasn't been treaded upon very similar to i feel the halloween movies which they tried to do but they failed in the execution we're not going to go into all of the details on why that movie failed but that movie has to go down as one of the biggest flops in terms of bringing a franchise back from the dead and then killing your franchise all over again. Roll the hearse, roll Michael Myers bitch ass out here. Anyway, moving on. With this film, they try and bring that element in. Now the question is, were they able to succeed? Are they able to pull it off? Well, I'll say yes and no. I won't give you too many spoilers for this review because I want you to go watch the film and enjoy it for yourselves. But I will be spoiling a few things. So buckle up, folks, because we are about to go into a little bit of a deep dive in terms of Scream 6. So let's get into the good of the film. The one thing which I'll say about the film is when it comes down to its action, its gore, and violence similar to Scream from 2022, it is always on point. I feel a good balance between the gore, the violence, and the action of the film. I feel they've been able to match tone quite well, and it's something that remains consistent throughout the whole film. So that's definitely a positive, because when it comes to these slasher movies, you've seen it all, they've done it all. It's how do you make something feel fresh but at the same time capture the elements of what made the movie so well received and also a staple within the genre so in regards to that i feel like the movie has done a perfect job of being able to balance those elements together another thing which i really liked about this film is i do like the chemistry of the characters This new group of friends is actually a group that over the course of the film, you bond with more and you become more invested. They did a good job in the first movie, but I feel in the second, you kind of get more growth out of them. It's not a lot, but again, the actors are so good that they're able to give you enough that where you actually root for these characters because you like them as individuals but you also like them within the dynamic of the group itself so they're a good successor 
to the franchise, unlike in Scream 4, when they brought a whole bunch of new people, and I didn't give a damn about any one of them. They could all die. I didn't really care. Same thing with, like, Scream 3, which was mostly, like, the original cast, but, again, you didn't really care about them as much, whereas in this one, you actually like the characters and you root for them. So, again, that's a positive. Now, I will say that when it came down to a lot of the deaths, yo, a few people that died, it really stuck out to me. It really stuck out to me because, again, I knew they were going to die, but how they died, they made me feel a way. And I have to take my hats off to the film for that. There's one death in particular. I won't say who. I won't say how. The only thing I will say is, listen, ladders and alleyways, they don't mix, dog. They don't mix. And those who know, know. Once you watch the film, it will make perfect sense. Now, let's get into the bad. The bad of the film... I cannot lie to you, without giving too much away and without going into spoilers, the one thing which I will say is this. A lot of people that I feel should have died, did not die. Now, I can't lie to you. I'm going to have to ruin one part. Gail should have been dead. I'm sorry. From the time they killed Dewey, I don't care about Gail no more. To me, Dewey was the heart of scream and when he got knifed up in that um hospital man my heart died with dewey so i don't give a damn about girl sydney obviously sydney is sydney but girl no without dewey i don't give a shit about her i don't understand why she is still alive and that's the thing which really got me vexed about this film these people are moving around like freaking wolverine because people get knifed up. When I tell you people get knifed up here, yeah, literally, Ghostface has to be for Peckham. He has to. He was born in Guy's Hospital and he was raised on Asylum Road. This man is Peckham through and through. Matter of fact, he's just South East London, not South West London, because them man use guns. He's South East London where the knife is king. Ghostface was active. This man was put in so much metal into people's bodies i thought that he was magneto but certain people did not go down when they were supposed to because they are mutants these guys took blades upon blades upon blades and they were still breathing let alone the blood loss they should have died from the amount of blood that they were losing they were out here looking like spongebob because they were full of holes just leaking fluid everywhere and somehow they are still in the game it didn't make any sense it just didn't make any sense so that's the only spoil i'm gonna give girl don't die that pissed me off she should have been six feet under from time you put dewey down listen girl you're gone i don't care about her she does not deserve to be in the final sydney Yes. Girl, no. She should have been in a hearse, getting driven down to meet the Undertaker for him to bury her clock. But she's alive. All right. Spoiler rant done. Let me get back to the spoiler-free rundown. Now, another thing which I didn't like about the film was the story was a little bit inconsistent, even in regards to who the killers were. So, whereas in the beginning, like I said, when they tried to make it seem that there could be multiple ghost faces because it's a cult following, the film quickly drops that angle and then it goes back to the formulaic, no, there's only two ghost faces or three, but they're working together and it's not a case of where people are being groomed to be ghost face, which I feel was a missed opportunity. Now, because of that, the people who actually are Ghostface, no. That part to me was very dumb. And I get it. It's meant to be a callback to Scream 2. But I feel 
they kind of missed an opportunity there because even once the reveal happens, which I must say was very predictable, once they got into the standard formula, I automatically knew who was going to be the killers. One threw me off a little bit, but it requires you to suspend a lot of your disbelief. And I feel like that's where the film fell short. Just to add on as well, these people are not built to survive. The reason why I say this is because there is multiple times when they will be fighting Ghostface. They get the upper hand, they've knocked him down. And rather than going for the kill, they always decide to run away. I don't understand. Please, if you have this man on the floor, cave his head in. And it's not even a case of where they push him off so they can escape. No, they have this man beat. All it would take is for them to pick up the knife and just go to town on him. Stab him in the head if you need to. But no, they never do that. They always run. And then he comes back chasing them all over again. Now, here's the thing. This man ain't Jason. This man ain't Freddy Krueger. He's a regular dunny. Put this man in the dirt and call it a day. In the words of T.I., expeditiously put him in a hearse and let's move on. But they never do. They will hit him, they got him down, and then they decide to run. And they will pick up a weapon that can kill him and still not use it. Please, if you want to survive, just do the simple task of killing this man. Or make it where, how it's written, it makes sense for why they run. Instead of them having upper hand and then they choose to run, it just feels very, very dumb at this point. But that's just me. So let's get into the verdict. For Scream 6, I'm going to give this movie... I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. The reason why is because it was a good watch, especially for what it is. It was highly enjoyable. There was a lot of moments that had me feeling a type of way. And I liked the characters, even though I felt like certain people should have died that didn't i have grown very fond of every single one of them so when they eventually do die which they better in the next scream somebody better die because at this point it's getting ridiculous kill girl kill girl i'm gonna start a hashtag that just says kill girl she gotta die in the next scream film she gotta get laid out she gotta get put right next to dewey let them have burial plots side by side so that at least in death she can be with him and be loyal. Hashtag kill girl. That's my final piece for that. But yeah. 8 out of 10 is going to be my verdict for the film. The biggest highlight is Ghostface himself. Listen, this new Ghostface is on job. And he is efficient at it. There's no rules. He ain't the old school Ghostface. This man is really out here living by a different code. If you see the way he's killing people and the way he's literally attacking, he don't care about anything. I don't know who offended this man. He moving like Michael B. Jordan and somebody called him corny in middle school. So he's out here looking for revenge because my God, this man is active. Everybody getting this work. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be in your house. It can be a convenience store. You can be in your bathroom. It can be in a train. It doesn't matter. You're going to get this knife work. You're going to get it. So just brace yourself to get some metal put in you and charge it to the game. Because at this point, it simply is what he is. He's a force of nature and he cannot be stopped. So guys, those are my thoughts and my opinions. If you've watched the film, let me know. Sound off in the comments. And I will catch you at the next Masquerade. And please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Peace.